Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm at Apex 2020 and I'm joined by John Mitchell of the IPC. John, great to see you. See you Philip. Thanks for stopping <laughs> by. Um, talk a little bit about the show later, but I really wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on in the industry and some of the initiatives that you've been doing that we're seeing some fruition in, particularly around diversity. Sure. Um, you know, we had a panel yesterday talking to um, some of the people that were involved in the women in, in tech thing, and we were looking out in the audience and noticing that although there aren't many women, when you look at the younger generation that's coming through in the industry, there are. they're a lot more dominant. And I'm actually working with a Silicon Valley startup that's 200 people, 48% female, which is fantastic. So there's some progress being made there. And I know you've got students on site today. So tell me a bit about that and what you see in terms of that progress. Sure. So I, I had a chance to join the Women in Engineering. It was the largest event we've ever had here. We have it each year. But um, just walking around the floor, I, I've seen the same thing. We have a lot younger group, evidenced also by more participation by the younger engineers as well. So we have this emerging engineer program where we, part, where we pair up someone that's fairly new into the engineering space with a mentor. And historically, we've done this for, I think, three or four years now, and we have somewhere between three or four participants. This year, 30. So it's just blown up, and probably, I don't have the exact demographics, but it feels like almost half are female, yeah. which yeah. is wonderful. And then we have 200 high school students here today yeah. from nine or 10 different high schools, and they'll be touring the plant. And again, it's a good mix. In fact, one school only brought their women in electronics, okay. which, was, which was great. You know, yeah. it's a whole just group of young, young ladies that are excited about getting involved in STEM, and, and yeah. this is the place. Yeah, and it, it's interesting. And you know, we, we keep looking at it year on year, and I, I know it's gonna take time. And one of the conclusions we, um, Initially, when I started the, de the debate yesterday, it's where can we take this debate forward? What do we need to be talking about next? What are we missing? But actually, when I got to the end of the debate and I talked to, um, I think, Sherry from Kaizen and uh, Julie Silk were, were involved in the panel, I just came to the conclusion it just needs to stay top of, top of agenda. That's right. You just need to pay attention. And it's diversity as a whole. It's not just gender diversity, it's also experience diversity, yeah. it's also locale diversity, it's uh, you know industry diversity in terms yeah. of what segment you work in because when we bring a group of diverse people together, you just get better solutions mm. because otherwise you get groupthink that's always the same thing, yeah. but we need that a little bit of chaos in there to push our boundaries to help us really realize what is possible and to question things that we've never, we haven't questioned for yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, um, Show's been show's been good. I think people are, are generally happy. I think some of the um, comments about footfall maybe relate to. I don't know if you think coronavirus has had any impact. It, it definitely has. So obviously, folks coming over from China or Asia, uh, not many people here from there, uh, obviously. And then there were also some organizations that uh, struggled because they, their companies just put on a travel ban. Yeah. But in spite of that, the people here are actually actively engaged. So yeah, I think that foot traffic is a little bit less. So we were just reviewing some of the numbers there and it may be down by 5% or something like that year on year. But the comments as I go around to the booth is that we've got as many leads as we had last year anyway because the right people are here. Yeah. And so the sense is that business has still been very, very good. Yeah. So, so we're very pleased with the show. Yeah, no, and I think that makes sense. Um, one of the comments that I've had from a, a few people is the, um, we've been talking about the different programs you've been doing in terms of the committees while you've been here. And I was talking to Michael Ford, who I think got the President's Award. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing that kind of, you know, we saw a lot of success with bringing people together with CFX, but now we're expanding that to definitions of digital twin and all these kind of different That's initiatives. Right. That's really got a nice momentum in it. It really does. In fact, we just brought on a full-time hire in, in the form of Matt Kelly from IBM, mm -hmm. uh, and he's going to be leading our Factory of the Future effort. And I, I put a lot of pressure on him saying, okay, your role is like to become the next Dieter Bergman. Okay. Uh, so it's not just a facilitator, which he will be doing, yeah. but it's also a contributor and making sure he is up to date on the latest. So he's going to be reaching out to the technology experts of the industry and trying to form a council around that so we can stay on top of these things. So, so yeah, it, activities like the that whole factory of the future piece is an area that we're advancing. Um, we, we're Re does revamping our IPC design activity, so it's been it's been good, but now we're trying to make it even better, yeah. you know. And so we're investing in our education programs for all of the above, and uh, yeah. And then of course the foundation we just launched last year, and we already have 27 university chapters, and 
like I said, 200 students upstairs yeah. going right now. Yeah, and that's moving very nicely. Um, you you have quite a lot of the other associations here, and I I, yeah. I like that I like that collaboration because as we see these industry, the lines between these industries are becoming quite fuzzy. It's quite blurred. So being able to have the semi guys here, being able to have INEMI here, being able to have SMTA here, and having yeah, them it's, contribute it's, and collaborate, yeah. and yeah, and HT Park, it, it makes lots of sense. Are you finding those those organisations to be very collaborative? And are you do you sit down together and kind of align goals? Um, we don't do that the last thing as much, but we we each kind of play in a different area and role. But it's it's uh, we also try to play together where it makes sense, you know. Yeah. So when it's when it's aligned with both of our missions, we do things together very, I think, very well. Yeah. So yeah, and that makes sense. Um, last question on the kind of. Um, political side and the disruption side. I'm going to be speaking to Chris later, so I'll dig a little bit deeper with him on that. Good. But there's been lots going on in 2019 that's kind of challenged the supply chain. There's lots going on now. You've definitely got a role to play there. Yeah, so um, we've been fairly vocal. We brought in a uh, chief economist, also in the terms in the form of Sean Duberback, who is uh, uh, CTA's chief economist prior for like 12 years, and so now he's ours, and he's helping us frame some of the challenges economically which plays well to the government officials in you know dc and in brussels and uh and then even in beijing you know yeah. as we as we talk about that so there's activity going on there all the time talking about you know i get quoted about my statements which really is i, I feel that tariffs are the wrong tool to resolve these things yeah. because it's doing so much harm to the industry but other, there's been good things as well. Uh, we were able to win uh, from the U.S. government uh, $5 million uh, on behalf of Lead Free, trying to resolve it for um, uh, high reliability electronics because yeah. we're still leaded there. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's so lots of like there's, there's, there's lots of minuses. yeah, there's lots of progress being made. But it's, I, th I just think it's important that you're constantly on top of it. That you're oh, yeah. constantly holding, you know, the government that doesn't understand that deep domain knowledge that that people right. here have. Yeah, that's right. And, and trying to make it simple. In fact, we're going to be launching some uh, video materials to really help simplify the situation yeah. as much as we can. So in a, as much as you can, capture the entire industry in a minute and a half and say, actually, it's probably more complicated than you think. Yeah. Um, and, and there are some great technologies that are sucking up a lot of the um, uh, funding and the uh, time for our government officials. And it, we applaud that but you can't forget about the rest of the industry because yeah. there's you know for the greatest silicon that you create or ai or what have you if there's nothing to put it on yes. there's a problem yeah. and so uh, we're working with them to help them see the entire ecosystem yeah yeah and i think your role is is to is to monitor all those different parts of the ecosystem right. and all the different layers of the industry and that's where you can add the most value exactly. john always a pleasure to chat Congratulations on a, another successful show i think Thank we're another much. three years here and then we're off to we're off to disneyland Yes, that's right. I think in 2024. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. so Off to Disneyland. I so, like that. So that'll that'll be that'll be <laughs> well, fun. At the Magic Kingdom. Apex does Disney. Wonderful. Thanks for your time and good to see you. Thanks, Philip. Thank you.